are certain states that you get to go to and you are so excited. And you know what? The number one place probably is Arizona. The reason why? It is so difficult to draw a tag. When you finally draw a tag after years and years, well, you know you are going to have absolutely incredible hunting. I've decided to call this year the year of the mule deer. I have some incredible mule deer hunts. And if you can see right behind me, we've got the Grand Canyon. I drew a tag for the Kayabab, which will just be on the rim of the Grand Canyon. It is gonna be phenomenal hunting. It took me nine years, but I've got a ton of other great hunts as well. So it is gonna be an awesome season. And I hope I can get on some big mule deer, have tons of fun. And I know this hunt is gonna be absolutely incredible. We're hunting right in the middle of the Kaibab Plateau in the northwestern portion of Arizona. This is one of the most sought after tags you can have in Arizona and there's a large population of mule deer that holds some really quality bucks. Well, I'm out here in Arizona. We're just getting ready for my hunt and I am so excited. There are huge mule deer here. I've been waiting nine years and finally drew this Kaibab tag. We don't have a ton of time out here, but they've got some big bucks spotted. We're gonna be going up actually glassing this morning. Travis has a really good area, so a lot of this is just gonna be sitting up glassing, but there's huge bucks in this area and I can't wait. The weather is beautiful. We've got great people around. It's gonna be a fun hunt. Y'all ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's get after it. Where are we headed? Right up to that one? To the top of here. Okay, I'll follow you. Most of our hunting for these mule deer are going to be done spot and stock. We're going to do a lot of glassing, but this is a little bit different than most of the Arizona spot and stock. We, we tend to glass pockets and we're going to keep moving. If the deer aren't there, we'll move to the next one, glass the next one, then we move to the next one until we find the deer that we're after. See this canyon up here? Mm -hmm. There's another one on the other side of this hill. When that weather starts changing, the deer funnel down through here to the low country. Start we just kind of pinch right through this area. Yeah, the winter down here in this low stuff. You can see the trails through yeah, there. Yeah, quite a bit of sign. Yeah, not to mention you can see everything up there. Well, I like it. You can watch those canyons. You can keep an eye on the low stuff. You got it all covered from up there. Pretty sweet. What time of the year do they start moving and migrating right yeah. now? Yeah, the weather starts getting cold, they start moving, especially when it starts snowing. Then they really get it on. We don't have any snow in the forecast, though, right? No, not yet. <laughs> We have got some big country that we got to the top here, and we have got miles and miles to glass. You can see Utah over there. You can, it's just really cool up here. So we've got a beautiful area right now, nice weather. We've got a little bit of wind, but it's not too bad. Um, so I think it should be good. If we get any nice bucks down there, we should be able to make a good stop. Sportsman's Alliance, our heritage, our fight protecting hunting from coast to coast. I am the Alliance. As a woman and female hunter, I've seen firsthand how animal rights activists target women. For 40 years, the Sportsman's Alliance has protected all hunters, but social media makes it easy to harass people and women are especially targeted. Just another fun fact showing you how sportsmen and women are helping make a difference. Trip, our goal is to come to the Kayabab where I finally drew a tag and we are going after big mule deer. Now this is one of the premier destinations in the entire country to go after big mule deer and I'm going to be heading out with Diamond Outfitters. They have an incredible operation. They're going to have an entire tent camp set up for us. So I'm so excited to get after these bucks and to get into the back country. There's a, a large population of mule deer up here on the Kayabab Plateau. It's one of the most sought after tags you can have for hunting mule deer. Um, so it's really a treat to come up here and, and get to guide these hunts every year. We got, looks like six, seven, eight. I've got eight doves coming out right down below us, probably 300 yards, but I don't see any bucks with them right now. One of the things that makes this place so cool for mule deer probably has to do with just the genetics, 
what they've done for management and all the terrain in the area you get to hunt. Yeah, it's cool to go after big bucks, but when you get to go to a place as beautiful as the Kaibab, that just makes it a whole, a whole nother experience. I mean, where we're hunting, we're only miles from the Grand Canyon. We have got beautiful bluffs. You can get up high, you see some amazing scenery, and then when you start looking close, you see some big mules. Arizona is one of those states where I don't get to come here very often hunting, but when I do, I am very excited. Now years ago, probably nine or ten years ago, I actually drew an elk tag. Now I was blown away. This was going to be in an amazing area and I drew this tag and I was just so excited. It was going to be an archery hunt and they had some huge bulls. I couldn't have been more excited. I was just getting into filming, being in front of the camera. I was always out there filming, being a cameraman. And we went out there and we hunted hard. They were all up, just right. You can see it from that bush on the right hand side. Going left to right, just staying right there. Now this was all public land, this was a self-guided hunt, we had put cameras out, we had scouted the area, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a bull. But three out of four people in my group, they all got bulls. So it was a really great trip, it was a fun hunt, and it was a great first experience in Arizona. Memory Chase, building our future one child at a time. Memory Chase is all about getting more kids involved and features home video from viewers just like you. This week we're heading to Illinois with 12 year old Jonathan Murphy. All right, let's hear your gobble. <laughs> Too small. I have to go for his body. Go for the head. Right at the head, okay? What if I miss? You won't miss. Okay. Jonathan, trust me. I'm trust me. Miss. Trust me, brother. Do it. You got it. You got him. You got him. Jonathan, you, you got, got him. him. Oh my god. Wait. There he is. Wow! Oh, buddy! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> what did you just do? I shot a turkey. Yeah? And I, and I can smell the gunpowder of success. <laughs> This segment was brought to you by Boss Buck. For the most user-friendly and dependable feeder on the market, choose Boss Buck Feeders. Now you're getting serious. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Hard-Hitting Easton Arrows, Golden Triangle Whitetail, Winchester, the American Legend, National Deer Alliance, HHA Sports, the leader in single pin technology. Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology Plus. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Rage Broadheads, leading the evolution in lethal technology. Convergent Hunting Solutions, where experience, innovation, and passion meet. Sportsman's Alliance, protecting hunting from coast to coast. Engel Coolers, the original high-performance cooler company. And 
Moose Utility Division, your leader in ATV UTV accessories. One of the unique things about hunting on the Kaibab is probably the fact that it is so difficult to draw a tag, so these deer are really well managed. There's a lot of deer, you've got new country, it's a totally different hunt than something that I'm used to, maybe in Nebraska going after mule deer or Alberta. You are up here, you're hunting steep, big country, you're hunting burns, you're getting up high, you're watching for these deer, and it truly is an incredible mule deer destination. Now on this trip to Arizona, I knew that a lot of this is going to be long range shooting. But as a bow hunter, I'm a firm believer, you can almost always get in closer. So my goal is going to be to try to get into 150 yards or less. Now this gun is sighted in dead on at 200. I'm going to be shooting 180 grain ballistic silver tip. And this is one of my favorite Winchesters that I have. It's a Model 70 all-weather SS, just an awesome gun. We got it topped with a Swarovski, a Z6i. So I've got the illumination in here, which I really like. It's a two to 12 by 50, so I can crank it up if needed or have that big field of view. So overall, we can see a long ways. It's gonna be really putting in the time to get in close to make that stock, close the distance, but I'm confident it's gonna be a great hunt because there are deer everywhere. I think we've seen everything in here. Let's get going toward the next spot. Okay. When I'm out spotting stock hunting, I absolutely love it. But some of the best things that you gotta keep in mind, that is patience. I like to see deer, I like to make a plan, and I like to get in close. But by doing that, you really have to be patient. You have to be smart. They've got to be right here below us. What do you think with it being that thick? Do you think it's better? You want to keep going? Or I, I can't think really see it. No, I think we need to go back around and get eyes on him so we know exactly where he's at. So Maybe you think we'll... just go all the way across the canyon? Yeah, let's go completely back, back out. If you're going in and things don't seem right, you have to back out. And that's something that a lot of times people think, well, we're this far in, let's just keep pushing on. No, you need to really judge the situation, adapt, and pull out if needed, and try something else. The best thing you can do is regroup back out and make a new plan rather than bust those mule deer out. So when you're out spotting stock cutting, you have to be prepared and you have to be patient. Not only had I been to Arizona hunting elk, but they actually have a season late in the year that's an over-the-counter archery hunt where you can go after muleys. Now when I heard that, I was like, I've been waiting around for a mule deer tag forever for Arizona. Sign me up. Well, we've got a really nice buck spotted. We originally thought he was about a 160. He's looking bigger than that. He's with a big group of does and a few other bucks. So we're gonna have to take a long way all the way around, come in with the wind in our favor, and hopefully come right over the top. But we're gonna have some walking to do before we get to him. So I went in and you wouldn't believe it. You don't think of Arizona as getting a bunch of snow. We got there and they got dumped on. I think we had 16 inches of snow. It made it for some really interesting hunting and I got close to a nice buck. He just wasn't quite the type of deer I was looking for, but it was really neat to get out there, to be right there on a buck like that, to be at full draw, let him walk through. And although I didn't go home with the big buck, I knew what Arizona had to offer. And I was confident that someday I'd be back and be looking for those big mule deer. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester, the American legend. Matthews Archery. Field and stream, where traditions begin. Scoutlookweather.com. Download the free Scout Look hunting app for your smartphone. Range Master Trailers, luxury gone rugged. Master Hand Milling, revolutionizing the range. Reinhardt, the best archery targets in the world. Garmin, enhance your outdoor adventures. Winchester, the American legend. S4 Gear. SCI, first for hunters. 
and Boss Buck for the most user-friendly and dependable feeder on the market. Now you're getting serious. This segment was brought to you by SCI, protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation. SCI is first for hunters, but first can't stay first without you. Join like your way of life depends on it. When I go to a new location, I've done my homework. I find places that have good animals. Hopefully the weather is going to be good. I'm going during the right time of the year. But the one variable you never know about is what the people are necessarily going to be like. Now I already knew Dan Adler of Diamond Outfitters, but I didn't necessarily know the guides. I didn't know the people that were going to be in camp. And that very first morning, instantly I thought, I'm the luckiest person ever. We got Travis as a guide and he's one of the nicest, most laid back, great hunters that you could ever ask for. Really, when I think of what I'm looking for in a guide, he's exactly it. He's someone that's smart about what we're doing, he doesn't get all worked up, and he's a hard hunter. And to me, that's huge. It's not just about the animals. I always say that. It's about the people you're with. And in this camp, I could tell we were gonna have a wonderful time. All ready? Yeah, got all your stuff? Yep. We can get up to that hill. Yeah, this is a pretty good area. We'll get up there and see if we can find them. I'll follow you. I was really looking forward to this hunt with Melissa. Watching her on TV, I, I, she seems like the real deal. And uh, upon arrival at camp and getting out in the field, she proved that to be true. She really is a hunter herself. So we hit the field to one of the points I really like to glass from. And we were finding plenty of deer from there, but just not the quality bucks that we were after. So we decided to go to another area that does tend to have bucks. And after a couple days of hunting, a lot of those bucks like to retreat to that area. After really putting in our time in the field, one of the things we were realizing is this is a heavily forested area. When we were up high, we could see all that brush. The deer can literally disappear in it. Well, Travis had another idea. He had an area that was a big burn had gone through, and you really can pick out the mule deer, and for whatever reason, the deer love it in this area. See them up there? Oh, yeah. They're moving yeah, across they're moving that hill. Just up left to right? Yeah. That, that yeah. back one? Yeah, he's a pretty good buck. Oh yeah, he is. Even though this is a burn area and it's pretty open with a lot of deadfall, the undergrowth is really starting to come back. These aspen trees are coming back and the deer are really seeking those for shelter and for feed. Um, so the deer are really populated back in there again. What do you think of him? Oh, I like him. I'd like to okay, get closer think, though. Yeah, I think we need to back off and get around on him. Oh yeah, that looks good. He's awesome. He's a stud. Now this deer is really nice, definitely stands out from the rest, and as soon as I put my glasses on him, I thought, oh yeah, this is a shooter. But what can we do to get closer? So immediately Travis and I talked back and forth. We made a plan to go up and over. We had a good wind, and we were hoping we could just come right down on him. There's a doe right there. We can see her ears sticking up. Right see the top of her back over that log? Yeah. Okay. I think those bucks are just on the other side. I think they're lower than them. The bucks are down a little bit lower. There's this doe and there should be another doe up here with her. By the time we got back to where we needed to pursue this deer, he ended up with some does and we could see them feeding up the hill towards us. We were just nice and patient, eased our way up and then we saw that buck. So we ranged him 150 yards and I thought, okay, this'll work. Hit. He's hit. He's hit. Oh, that is awesome. I think that'll do. I think oh, you got him. That is so cool. Nice shot. And he was down for the count. And you know, walking up on a buck like this, it truly was amazing. I did not know he had all this extra. We've got stickers, extra points. Just a massive Check out that buck. velvet. Velvet on there, nice brows. 
Holy smokes. That is a nice deer. That is better than I could have even hoped Right for. on. This wasn't just about this hunt. It was putting in that time. It was putting in for nine years, coming out to a beautiful location like Arizona, making new friends, and now walking up on a beautiful deer. Now, when I got up to this deer though, it was better than I could have ever imagined. He had extra points. He had stickers coming off on both sides, and I was just in pure amazement. I could see the joy in Travis's face. We had all worked so hard, and when you come to a place, you can only hope for the best, and honestly, on this trip, it was better than I could have ever imagined. It's the way we like to do it. Yes, that is awesome. Wow.